Hello, uh, I am uh, Rui Cardoso, Senior Lecturer for Aerospace Engineering. So uh, this face you are seeing there is my face <laughs> and I'm going to um, um, introduce you to statics. So I'm going to, to show you some sample lectures and tutorials on uh, statics. So if you want for some reason to email me uh, with any query, you have my email address here. And uh, you also have these uh, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, things for Brunel, which you can try to follow. Um, so what I'm going to cover in these uh, sample lectures and tutorials is basically material for uh, your year one at Brunel. So I'm going to cover statics only. Of course, you are going to do many other things, but the main main topics I would like you to to focus is basically the, the first three vector analysis I'm going to give a very quick review of vector analysis with the basics and then I'm going to move to equilibrium of a particle where a lot of vector analysis is required and then I will introduce moment produced by a force vector so these are quite basic and but extremely important concepts that you need to know very well for uh, the remaining of your lectures. Uh, then I will move to uh, the equilibrium, uh, sorry, equivalent system force moment, where you will learn how to basically build an equivalent system that is uh, in the same equilibrium conditions as the original system. That will be very important for the topic that follows, which is equilibrium of rigid bodies, uh, which is the main, uh, the main uh, topic in statics. We, we, will study, okay, we will study many different types of supports. The, the bodies or the, the, the rigid bodies, they need to have supports. They cannot be levitating in the air. Uh, and then we are going to learn how to replace those supports with uh, forces, which are called reactions. And we are going to learn how to derive the equilibrium equations. Uh, basically, these equilibrium equations will, will um, make sure that your body is in, is in equilibrium. And then from those equilibrium equations, you can calculate many different unknowns. Uh, then we will talk a little bit about beams. Uh, we will derive the transverse shear force and bending moment diagrams for beams. So this is a kind of a introductory, uh, introductory uh, video I will have for all these sample lectures. Of course, uh, different lectures will have this same introductory video, but they will refer to different topics on this table of contents, if you want. Uh, another thing you can, if you are more curious, I, I, I have a YouTube channel which you can, if you are interested of course and curious, you can try to see what I had there. So I have a, a lot of lectures in that YouTube channel so you can search for that channel by googling, googling Ricardozo YouTube. Uh, I have lectures for more advanced years uh, so I recommend at this point you not to see those lectures. But um, uh, I also have some supporting material for uh, statics in year one there in YouTube channel. So I think it's a, it's a nice thing for you to, to see as well. I would like also to say that all the examples I will be doing in these lectures and tutorials, uh, not all of them, but uh, many of them were taken from these recommended books I have listed here in this slide. So engineering mechanics statics from Ebler or from vector mechanics for engineers statics from Beer and Johnson uh, from engineering mechanics statics from Marion Bolton and Craig and also from my own book stress analysis for lightweight structures a MATLAB oriented approach so all the examples you will see in the videos sometimes I refer which book I've taken the example sometimes I don't but these are the books that we uh, the, uh, sorry that I, I I follow so in case I forget to mention which book I took the example you have here the list of books uh, so you you know where they came from
All right, thank you. So we will move now uh, to the specific lecture. All right, so next, uh, last week, last week, you remember that we had a system. Can you please make silence? Okay, so we have only one hour, so we, we, don't, we cannot spend too much time talking and making noise, all right? So please calm down a little bit. So last week, as I was saying, remember, we built the equivalent system for moment. Yeah, equivalent system for moment. And what we did was, if we have a general body or a component or a part of a machine, whatever you are analyzing, if that component has many different forces applied at different points, something like this, the force F at point A, force P at point B, force T at point C. So what we did last week was we found a system which is equivalent to this one, where everything is located at one single point. So we calculated the resultant of the forces, this R, which is the summation of all the forces. Yeah, so we have, in the original system on the left hand side, we have three forces, F, P, and T. So this resultant is going to be force F plus force P plus force T. Right? And then we also add to calculate the summation of the moments about point D, which, as you know, moments is a vector. Uh, and we calculated that summation of the moments by doing the cross product of a position vector, cross product with the force vector, right? And then we have this equivalent system. This is my moment at point D, which I told you, okay, two arrows to distinguish the moment from the force. So these two systems, they are equivalent. The greatest advantage is on the system on the right hand side, we have everything located at one point, which is point D. And then we can say for the system to be in equilibrium, we just need to say the resultant of the forces is equal to zero. And the moments about point D, they also need to be equal to zero. All right? So this is a very quick summary of what we did last week. I think you, yeah, this week you are starting to do this in the TBL sessions. So this group is going to do this today afternoon and tomorrow. But the last Monday group, they already started to do this yesterday, okay? So in the TBL sessions, you are going to start practicing this equivalent system for small. So what I want to do today is to introduce a very important subject, which is the free body diagram. I want to do it with you very slowly. This is quite important. You tend to ignore the free body diagram. And I, I want to show you that this is the most critical, in my opinion, is the most critical uh, step for the solution of static problem, is the proper construction of the free body diagram. Okay? I'm going to give you an example. Imagine, for example, you have a cantilever beam, something like this, which has a force let's say 10 kilonewtons applied at the tip, for example. So let's say this beam has a length of uh, one meter, something like this, okay? So I want to get the, so let's say this is point A, this is point B of my beam. I want to get the reactions. We are going to see what this is at the support located at point A. All right? So one thing you start uh, noticing is that all our bodies, they need to have a support. 
they cannot be just hanging in thin hair because due to gravity they will fall down. They will not be in equilibrium, right? So all the components of machines, uh, beams, you know, bridges, everything has supports. This kind of support that you have here we call is the clamping support. It means it's like if you have a beam that is clamped on the wall, yeah? So the wall will be the support of this beam. So in order to get reaction, so the reaction basically is a force. So this support is providing some uh, forces and moments at point A that will hold the beam at rest, at equilibrium, right? So I want to know how much is the value of that, those forces and moments at point A. That is the question. So what we have to do is we need to build the free body diagram. As the name says, free body diagram, we need to isolate our body, in this case our beam, isolate it from the support. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in order to isolate my beam and build my free body diagram, I'm going to cut this connection at point A, remove this connection, and I'm going to isolate my beam here. Okay? So I need to represent all the external load I have in my beam, which in this case is these 10 kilonewtons. But if I do only this, this beam is not going to be in equilibrium, right? Because I remove the support, the beam will fall. It's not going to be in equilibrium. So I need to replace the support with reactions, right? With forces. And the way you build the reactions, you need to think this way. For example, imagine if you want to move the beam in this horizontal direction at point A. Okay, imagine you have a beam clamped here on the wall, right? You want to move it on the horizontal direction. Do you think the wall will allow that movement to happen? No, it will not allow. So it means it will have a force there that is keeping the beam at rest not allowing it to move in the horizontal direction. So you need to represent that with a reaction in the horizontal direction, which you can call it AX. Of course, you, we need to have a coordinate system, right? So this is my X coordinate axis, this is my Y coordinate axis. So this reaction AX basically is the reaction that the wall is doing on the beam if I try to move the beam in the horizontal direction, okay? We can think in the same way if I try to move the beam in the vertical direction. That support will not allow the beam to move in the vertical direction as well, yeah? So it means it is applying a reaction or a force in my beam in the vertical direction, and that force will not allow the beam to move in the vertical direction. So that force is another reaction, a Y. Okay? We are going to talk about the direction here. I put a Y downwards. You might be thinking, why didn't you put a Y upwards? Yeah. I know that question will, <laughs> will appear. You are going to see at the end when we get the equilibrium equations, if you get a negative value for a Y, it means your initial orientation was wrong, and then you need to go back and reverse the orientation of AY, okay? So these two reactions is when you try to move the beam, translate the beam in the horizontal and vertical direction. What if you try to rotate the beam about point A? Do you think if you have a beam clamp <coughs> on the wall, do you think it will rotate about point A or not? So I can... In order to better answer that question, I can uh, draw here the deformed configuration of the beam. It will deform something like this. Right? So point B will move by, by this deflection or displacement in the vertical direction. Point A is not moving because it has a support there. And it is not also rotating. The rotation about A is not allowed. So whenever a rotation or a translation is not allowed, we need to include a reaction, okay? In this case, 
rotation constraint means my reaction is going to be a moment. When rotations are constrained or restrained, the reaction is a moment. When translations are constrained, the reactions are forces. Quite simple, isn't it? So I need to include here a moment, which I will say this is my moment at point A, which is going to be the reaction, which is basically the effect of the wall on the beam that not, does not allow the beam to rotate about point A. Okay? So what you have here, this system you have here, not the original one, this system you have here with the body you are isolating, in this case the beam, the external load of 10 kilonewtons, and the reactions, this system is your free body diagram. Free body because I released my body from the support. And I replaced the supports with the reaction, right? So why is this a critical step in the solution of a statics problem? Because if you don't put the reactions properly in your free body diagram, if you miss one reaction, everything comes wrong at the end. Right? Imagine, for example, you don't include the moment as reaction. Basically, what you are saying is the beam is allowed to rotate about point A, and that is not true. Okay? Right, so there are many different types of supports. If we continue the beam, for example, I can give you another example. Imagine another beam. It can be, for example, a bridge. Yeah? I can give you different supports, something like this. This support here and this support here. It's, which is completely different from this initial problem I, I gave you, right? The, the supports are completely different, isn't it? I can say, for example, imagine there is a force here on the beam. So what do these supports mean? Well, these two support, if you do the free body diagram, if this is your point A, if this is your point B, this support here, or if you want, before I do this, the deformed configuration of the beam is going to be something like this. Okay? Of course, I'm exaggerating on the defor deformation of the beam. It will not deform that much. It's a very tiny deformation. But anyway, for visualization purposes, it will deform something like this. And you can see that at point A, there is a rotation angle for the beam, right? So the beam rotates about point A, isn't it? So if the beam rotates about point A with this support that you have there, it means the rotation is allowed. If the rotation is allowed, I should not include a moment as reaction at point A. So the only reactions you will have at A is going to be AY and AX. No moment there, yeah? Why don't you have a moment? Because that support allows my beam to rotate about point A. OK? What about the support at point B? Look at that. You can see that support suggests like it is a, a roller or a skate, isn't it? Skate means you can move in the horizontal direction. That point B of the beam can move in the horizontal horizontal direction. If that movement is allowed, it means there is no reaction in the horizontal <coughs> direction. It's quite simple. If your movement is constrained, you need to put a reaction. If the movement is allowed, there is no reaction. So the movement in the horizontal direction is allowed, so no horizontal <coughs> uh, reaction at B. But the movement in the vertical direction is constrained, so it means I need to include a reaction at B in the vertical direction only, which is BY. Rotation again about B is allowed, so it means no <coughs> moment as reaction. Okay? So something <coughs> like this. Uh, uh, all right. Any questions so far? Yes. Sorry? Oh, yeah. 
in the free body diagram, I forgot to include here the force. And you need to include the coordinate system, x, y. So this is going to be your free body diagram, OK? Force F is an external force. For example, imagine a, a bridge, OK? You have beams there. Uh, in that bridge, you, have, you can have cars and trucks passing. So you will have a load, which is, for example, the weight of the cars and the trucks. So that force can represent that, that loading, OK? It's an external force. The reactions are uh, the forces that the supports are doing to the beam. So if you don't have the supports, the beam will want to fall down. But the reactions, the supports will react with these forces so that the beam is at equilibrium. Yeah? So that's what this represents. All right, so what I want to show you now is many different types of supports. Different types of supports you can have in the structures or in the parts you are doing the free body diagram. And these different supports, they introduce different types of reactions. So if you go to the Ebler book, Statics, because Ebler is the, is the author, he also has a volume on dynamics. So for this bit we are doing in term one, you need to look at statics. So I did scan this from Ebler book. You can see, for example, if you are doing the analysis of this body, that underline here in red, if you are doing the free body diagram of this body in red, if the support in this case is a cable, all right, so the cable, as I told you, I think I told you this two or three weeks ago. If you have a cable, a cable like this, it can only carry tensile force, isn't it? If you try to do a compressive force, look what happens to the cable. It buckles, right? It cannot carry a compressive force. It can only carry a tensile force. But one thing we know, this tensile force has the direction of the cable. Yeah? So when you have a support, which is a cable, you will have only one unknown, which is the magnitude of the force on the cable. Because you know the direction. You know this angle theta, which is the direction of the cable. So, that, so a cable basically only introduces one reaction, which is the magnitude of the force in the cable. All right? So you have more different types of uh, supports. Look at this. You have a roller. You know this roller is, is moving on this uh, inclined, uh, on this slope. So the movement along the slope is allowed, but the movement perpendicular to the slope is constrained. That's why you have a force only in the perpendicular direction to the slope, yeah? as, a, as your reaction. Same thing for a roller or a pin in a slot. You know the direction of your re reaction, so the only unknown is the magnitude of your reaction. You have other types of, for example, in 3D, you have a ball and socket or an inch. You can also have an inch in 2D. So this inch means ball and socket means, ball and socket means it can rotate, yeah? So you will, if it can rotate, you will not have any moments as reactions because rotations are allowed. The only reaction you have is if you try to translate the ball in the socket, the socket will not allow that translation to happen. That's why you have these three reactions as unknown, right? Which basically is these three forces, they are constraining the movement in the x, y, and z direction of the ball in the socket. Journal bearing, these kind of things you have in many, in your cars, uh, you have a lot of this stuff. So look at this. If you try to rotate about this axis, about the longitudinal axis, that rotation is possible. Otherwise, the, the, the axle will not be able to rotate. So if it is possible, it means you don't have a moment here as reaction in this direction. But if you try to rotate this ax about this axis, vertical axis, that is not possible. So that rotation is constrained. That's why you have this moment mz here as reaction. You see how it works? 
you have more. So if you take a look at these books you have in the library, by the way, in Blackboard, reading list, there are many different books there we are recommending. Last week I went to the library just to, for curiosity to check, because there is an entire shelf with only statics books, okay? I went there to see how many books were there, and I was surprised to see that all of the books were there. Right. So, okay, what I want to say is that you have a lot of books in the library. You don't need to buy, okay? Just go there, grab some books, because these men, books, different authors, they have a lot of examples, yeah? Some with the tailored solutions, some examples proposed and solutions at the end, final result, yeah? Some, don't, some examples don't have final results, but what you can do is, you can solve the example, and then in TBL sessions, if you have any question, ask the GTAs, the teaching assistants there. They are there. They are being paid to answer your questions. Yeah? Okay? I'm also trying to upload in Blackboard some examples. I do some scans. But it's not a very good idea to do scans of books that we have in library. Yeah? But anyway. All right. So what I suggest to do now, so we spend more or less... 30 minutes in this first half. What I'm planning to do now with you and to assimilate this concept better is to do this question from past, a past year exam. Okay? So this was one question I gave, I don't know if it was last year or two years ago, it doesn't matter. But I want to do this question with you today. I hope we have time. If we don't have time, what I promise you is I will upload the solution in Blackboard because I have detailed solution step by step, okay? So I will focus here on the main steps on this problem. Uh, basically, this problem, you can easily solve it if you understand how to build the free body diagram. If you don't understand what I just explained to you about the free body diagram, this problem can be a nightmare for you. All right, so let's do it slowly. So the question is, okay, you have this plier. So this plier is, so I have this figure here, it's better. So you are applying this force at, in these two points, 112.5 Newtons. And what you want to do, you want to cut this. So you are basically exerting on this uh, cylinder there, a cutting force. Okay? So they are saying here in the question to ignore the friction. So basically they are saying this force you will have here is going to be perpendicular to this edge. If you have friction, you will have a horizontal force as well there. But they are, we are saying here ignore friction. I'm telling also that these this connections here, this point, this, 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 they are, they are inches. So inches means you, <coughs> rotation about those points are allowed. Okay? They can rotate about those points. So the question is, Calculate the cutting force at point E and the reactions at inches A, B, C, and D. So these inches, this, 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 and this, basically they are supports. And what I'm asking you is, okay, if they are supports, they are exerting, they are putting forces there at those points. I want to know the value of those forces, those reactions, okay? Together with the cutting force at point E. Right? That is the main question. So the first thing you need to do in this situation is 
you need to choose one body. So you have here multiple possible bodies that you can use. For example, you can say something like this. I can try to isolate this body here. All right? I can try to isolate this body and do the free body diagram of this body that I underlined there in red. So in order to do that, what I have to do is, so I'm, I'm going to try to draw it here. OK? So this is my inch at D. This is my inch at B. So this is the body I am isolating. So I'm breaking the connections of this body at point D and B, isn't it? Imagine you want to remove that part of the plier. You need to remove the inch at D, and you need to remove the inch at B. Then you can isolate that part, right? And we know that when we remove the supports, when we remove the supports, we need to replace those supports with reactions. So let's start at point D. I removed the support at D, so I need to, I'm going to use the green color now, I need to include the reactions at D. If I try to move point D in the horizontal direction, that movement is not going to be allowed, so I'm going to include a force in the horizontal direction, dx. If I try to move point D in the vertical direction, that is not allowed as well. So I'm going to include here a vertical reaction, dy. If I want to rotate about D, that is possible, which means no moment as reaction. Yeah, quite important. I can tell you, some students, previous years, they put a moment there, everything is wrong. Nothing I can do. Because if you put a moment at D as a reaction in an inch, you are saying basically the inch cannot, does not allow rotation, which is not true. Okay. Same thing for point B. If I try to move point B in the horizontal direction, it is not allowed, that move, movement. So I will have a reaction at B, Bx in the horizontal direction. If I try to move it in the vertical direction, by. OK? There's still one more thing you need to consider. This part of the plier is exerting a force on this cylinder. The cylinder will react on the plier exerting a force or applying a force in the opposite direction. I will call this force Fe, force at E, which I know is a vertical force. OK? So this is one possibility for a free body diagram. So this is my free body diagram for this part of my plier. Now you need to do this analysis. So, so the second step, so maybe I can write here. So the first step is the construction of the free body diagram, FBD. That's what I did there. Of course, you need to have a coordinate system, right? So this is my x. Let me move this a little bit down. This is my x, and for example, I can have my y axis here. So the first step is to build a free body diagram. The second step, what you need to do is you need to build the equivalent system force moment. OK, so you need to calculate the resultant of the forces. So you need to add all the forces together. And then you choose a point 
can be point B or point D or point E. You choose any point you want, and then you need to calculate the moment produced by all the forces about that point. That's what we did last week, right? Then you get a resultant and a moment applied at one point of your body. The third step is just to write the equilibrium equations. You just need to say, okay, my resultant of the forces needs to be equal to zero. <coughs> my summation of all the moments also equal to zero. These are your equilibrium equations. All right, so these are the three steps that you have to do to solve these problems. But what I suggest is, before you start doing the second step, you need to look at your free body diagram and do a quick analysis. Okay, you will have to calculate the resultant of the forces, which is the summation of the forces. In a 2D problem, that will give you two equations. So the resultant will have a component in the x direction and a component in the y direction which you say they need to be equal to zero. So these are two equations, right? The first equation is this one, x components equal to zero. Second equation is this one, y components equal to zero. You have two equations here from the resultant of the forces. If you do, for example, summation of moments, summation of moments about point D equal to zero, in a 2D problem, you will have only components in Z direction. So you, you will have only one equation in a two-dimensional problem. So when I say here equilibrium equations in a two-dimensional two problem, in fact, you will have, okay, in a 2D problem, you will have three equilibrium equations. Okay? So if you have only three equilibrium equations, what you have to do now is you have to look at your free body diagram and see how many unknowns you have or how many reactions and unknown forces you have. And then you, you, you start looking and then you see, okay, Bx, I don't know how much is Bx, is an unknown. By, another one, Dx, Dy, and Fe. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Five unknowns, and I have only three equilibrium equations. So I can never solve this problem only with this body. Yeah? Because I don't have enough equilibrium equations. So what, what do I do now? Well, I need to get another body from my plier. So I need to... I need to go back to my plier and say, okay, so I have more bodies here, so I can, for example, look now at this body. I'm going to underline now in green. I can look at this body in green, isolate this body in green, do an, a new free body diagram for this body in green. If I do that, at the end I will have three additional equilibrium equations. Yeah? So basically, I have more unknowns than in equations so far. So if I take other parts of my plier to do another or additional free body diagrams, I will get more equilibrium equations for my unknowns, right? So if I try to isolate this green, so I'm going to try to draw it here. Uh, it's going to be a bit more complicated. But what I can do eventually, let me see if I can do that. If I try to copy and paste, maybe now I can try to delete this guy. Oh, nice. Remove this red. I can just do a quick fix here. 
Very good. You see what I did? So I'm isolating this body in green. Now I, I need to represent all the forces I have in this body in green. Look, which external force do I have? 112.5 Newtons. I need to include this force because this force is applied on my body in green, which I am isolating. Yeah? So I need to put here 112.5 Newtons. <coughs> what, is, what else do I have? So in order to isolate this, I have to remove the connection at my inch B. And then I need to, in my inch B, which is this one here, my point B, I need to include the reactions there. One horizontal reaction and one vertical direction. And this now is the critical thing. You need to be very careful. This is where I get a lot, a lot of errors in the exam. <coughs> we already isolated this part of the plier in red. And at point B, we included already reactions BX and BY. BX going to the right, BY going upwards, right? This is what? This is the action of this part in green on the part in red color of the plier, OK? So this part in green is applying these forces, these BX and BY, on this red part of my plier. What is going to happen is this red part will react on the green part at the same point B with reactions which need to be equal to this BX and BY, but in the opposite direction. This is Newton's third law. So what I'm saying basically is in this point B here, for this new free body diagram, my reaction at B needs to be opposite with this one. So it needs to be same magnitude, but in the opposite direction, going to the left. If you put there BX going to the right, I can guarantee you everything is wrong at the end. You can try that at home, do this as an exercise, because you are violating Newton's third law. I told you already, we don't violate Newton's laws. OK? Same thing for the vertical reaction. I need to include a BY, which has the same magnitude of this one here we applied before, but it needs to be in the opposite direction. This is the action-reaction problem. If I apply a force here in this wall with my hand to the left, the wall will react in my hand with a force on the right direction. So these two forces here, they cancel each other, and my hand is at rest, in equilibrium, right? Imagine now, if I apply a force to the left on the wall, the wall will react with a force to the left. Do you think that will be in equilibrium? No, my hand will go through the wall. That is completely wrong, isn't it? So this is a critical step. This is a critical step. Now, point A is also an inch which I am. This is my point A. So I am also breaking down the connection at point A. So I need also to include a reaction in the horizontal direction and a reaction in the vertical direction. OK? And that's all we have. Look, in order to isolate this body in green, I had to cut the supports at point A and B. I did that, and I replaced the supports with the reactions. They are all there. Yeah? And what do we have to do now? Well, what we have to do now is So this is my new free body diagram. I can include a, I should include a coordinate system, x, y. 
and I write again my equilibrium equations, which are summation of forces in the x direction equal to zero. One equilibrium equation. Summation of forces in the y direction equal to zero. So don't forget this is my resultant force, is the summation of all forces. So I will have one equation here, another equation here. <coughs> the third equation is summation of moments about any point you want. Can be point A, for example, equal to zero. That will give you a third equation. And now you do a balance. You, OK, so we have a total of how many unknowns? So we have five unknowns from this free body diagram. Bx, By, Dx, By, Fe. And then if I look at this free body diagram, Bx and By, they are not new unknowns because I consider Bx and By in the previous free body diagram. So Bx and By here, they are not new unknowns. The only new unknowns are Ax and Ay. OK? So what I have to do is I will have 5 plus 2 makes 7 unknowns. And the number of equilibrium equations I have is three equilibrium equations for this free body diagram here, plus three equilibrium equations for this other free body diagram. So I have six equilibrium equations. <coughs> Still not enough. Still not enough, isn't it? I think I was a bit harsh in that exam. I will try not to be so harsh with you guys. So it means you can still not solve the problem. You need to do another free body diagram. You need to choose another part of the ply. <laughs> right? So <clears throat> because you still don't have enough equilibrium equations for your unknowns. So what I decided to do was, I'm going to now select this other body, this one in blue now, because I don't have space in this page, I'm going to, imagine I isolated this body, I'm going to represent the reactions on this one in blue, okay? In fact, I can do it. In fact, I can do it properly. OK, wait. I'm going to copy this again. Copy. I can do it in a different page. <laughs> so I am now looking at the this part in blue, oops, okay? So I'm isolating this part of my plier in blue. I need to represent all the forces I have in this part in blue. I have this force here. <coughs> Careful, uh, another thing here I see in the exam. Some of you, sorry, not some of you, your <laughs> colleagues in the past, they, are isolating this part in blue, but they decided to include this force. This force is not in the free body diagram in blue. This force is in the free body diagram in green. So you only represent the forces that are applied on the free body diagram you are analyzing. So this force here you should not include. You should include this one. Yes, because this one is <coughs> on the free body diagram that you have in blue. So I need to include that one here in this point, 112.5 newtons. OK? What else do I need to include? Well, I have inches at point C and A. So this is my point, sorry, my point C. This is my point A.
Point A, what are the reactions? Careful here, because we defined already in our free body diagram in green, the reactions at point A, AX to the right and AY upwards. So in the free body diagram in blue, I need to have these forces in the opposite direction. So I need to have AX to the left and AY downwards. And this AX and AY, they are not new unknowns because we already consider as a new unknown in your green free body diagram. The other reactions I need to include is the ones at C and at inch C. So I will have a CX and CY. Okay? Now, resultant of the forces, you will have summation of the forces in the x direction, summation of the forces in the y direction, they need to be equal to zero. Again, for this free body diagram, so you have one, two equilibrium equations. Summation of moments about any point can be point C or point A, any point. You will have equal to zero, so you will have your third equilibrium equation. So you will have three additional equilibrium equations. So you remember previously we had six plus three makes nine equilibrium equations. Unknowns, so AX and AY, they are not new unknowns, but CX and CY, they are new unknowns. So if you go back, We had seven unknowns, right, for these two free body diagrams. So we now have two additional unknowns, which are CX and CY. So it means we will have nine unknowns. Nine equilibrium equations for nine unknowns, problem solved. You just need to solve a system of equations and get your unknowns. Yes? The positive. Well, there is a question here, I think is related with the initial orientation of the reactions, right? Yeah, I did CY downwards, CX to the left. You could have done CY upwards, CX to the right. The only thing you cannot do is the action reaction, Newton's third law. AX and AY at this one in blue needs to be opposite with AX and AY of this one in green. Yeah? So, what is going to happen here regarding this initial orientation, I did put CY downwards. When you solve this system of equations, nine equations for nine unknowns, if you get CY minus something, it means, yeah, it, it means CY is not downwards, you need to reverse CY and put it upwards, all right? Okay, so what I promise I will do is, I have the solution of this problem here. I will put this in blackboard, okay? So I just wanted to give you these steps. You are going to practice this a lot in the team-based learning sessions. I will upload this in blackboard. Next week, not next week. I think next week you don't have a lecture, right? I think it's on that. We will do more of this, okay? Please return the sheets to me. All right? <laughs>